You're welcome to Eyewitness News. The accusation against you is that, first of all, you are conducting a probe which has tentacles so wide that you're going outside the remits that were given you by the speaker when they gave you a term of reference to operate as a committee. You are now even discussing the operations of the police service, even at the regional level, and so on. That's the first accusation. How do you respond, sir? That is totally baseless. Nobody can educate us about our remit. Our remit is so clear, and we understand what we are doing as a committee. So if anybody says, oh, we're trying to exceed our remit, in what areas are we trying to exceed our remit? We've not gone beyond the tape and the ramifications of the tape to the extent that we are not just going to call the whole of the world to come and address the issues that could be gone into. So I'm very much surprised that somebody is saying that they are trying to uh, go beyond our remit. What is very pathetic sometimes is when people come be, appear before the committee, they, be, they begin to detect as to how we should work. I find it very sad. We try to be very civil and polite, but don't walk before a committee and then begin to tell the committee what you think the committee should do. I think we are dummies and we don't know our left from right. It is very unfortunate and very unprofessional. But they say that you have gone outside your remit to the extent that you are discussing for instance, how promotions are done in the service, you are discussing... They have how, not discussed. You are discussing how... The, okay, they say you've discussed how the police operates in regions and several other issues, which they thought that had false. nothing to do with the terms of reference. False. We've not, we've not gone there at all. Somebody posed a question to another individual, a witness, not us, and the individual touched on a few matters, but they were not even detailed as to touch on how the police functions in the regions and who is this and who is that. We are very much conscious of how some of these witnesses can go uh, bananas. So, so when they, they try to do anything, we rather rein them in. They can tell if you like over elaboration and the rest of it. So I don't understand why anybody is saying that uh, maybe we are permitting people to go beyond the, I mean, I mean, our uh, remit. I don't see how we've done it. The records also show. Eventually, when, if you want to read the proceedings, you see how the um, committee has been very circumspect that uh, we don't do an overkill. That's not what we intend doing. And you've not done that at all. You, you have invited witnesses, and these witnesses are also inviting witnesses. The question is being asked, does your committee allow witnesses to invite other witnesses? We've seen a letter where a group of witnesses is asking another group to be invited to come and say one or two things. Is that something the committee is going to admit? And is that really part of your plan? You see, when somebody alleges that I'm going to prove my case or collaborate my case with, uh, uh, collaborate my case with a, uh, um, a witness, the committee will sit and see the relevance of you bringing the witness. So if it is relevant that we should bring the witness, we're going to bring the witness. If it is not relevant and it's like, oh, this is another fishing expedition or this is an uh, over-elaboration, I mean, we will not permit you to do that. And even when you are in any situation and are trying to present facts, they will look at what we call relevant facts. So what we are trying to import, oh, okay, we want to use the committee to come and settle personal calls with the IGP. We will not permit you to come and do that. So in the very matter of the request to invite some witnesses, what's the position of the committee? Are you going to allow those extra witnesses to come before you, or you have dismissed that? We have not dismissed any witness, uh, the issue of any witness appearing before us. We are looking at the relevance of the witness in trying to uh, as, uh, resolve the issues within our remit. So if, you, if it is your thinking that this witness will help you to um, um, uh, show up what we are trying to say. But when we look at what the witness is about to say, we will not add to the evidential weight of what we are doing. As a committee, we have the powers of relevance. In any, any arrangement, even this very program that you are trying to do, it's only what is relevant to the program that you are admitted. And that professional judgment, they should leave it to the committee to, I mean, to, to take. So when we kn would we know what your position on that letter that we have seen is going to be like? Yeah, we communicate 
I mean, I mean, the request to call X or Y to the relevant person who wanted the person called. And, and that is why we're going to do it. So we have not blocked, I mean, wholesale that we won't permit witnesses to come and show up the evidence of some witnesses who have already testified before the crime. If not, so so. There's another issue, an accusation against you that you are simply wasting the time of the IGP. You have asked him, for instance, to come before you from today all through Saturday. And you are making him come face to face with his um, his genius, and you are going to make these genius question him. And that that does not that flies in the face of administrative procedure. What do you say to that? Well, in their own, excuse me to say, um, uh, uh, judgment as to what we are doing. Because we thought that this committee has been extremely fair. That is why our initial we opened the door for the IGP to state its case. Because some people have stated, uh, have stated something against the IGP openly. So we, we afforded the IGP to, I mean, also state its case. Now, it was becoming obvious that we, are, we had issues of national security. That's why we're trying to do in camera. Who tells you that when you are under an investigation, you can just fly, I mean, you can just raise issues of hierarchy and seniority and say that, okay, because of that, people should not confront each other. But if you've not gone there, and guess what? The IGP's own people have said, oh, the IGP has nothing more to add to what he's already said. And the committee agreed. So what, where is the, uh, impartial, uh, the partiality in this matter? What have we done which is to the disadvantage of the IGP? If the IGP believes that he cannot attend upon a committee of parliament. And that is his own understanding of what the parliament stands for. But to say that you are wasting the IGP's time. I mean, what kind of arrogance is that? That an IGP cannot be called before a committee of parliament. Why are we wasting his time? But, but, but maybe, that, maybe the duration that, that you're inviting him from today through to Saturday, and when they appeared before you today, uh, there was nothing that happened except to see... The, the witnesses should go and return tomorrow if they have any more evidence to share. And they thought that that looked like you were, you were not sure what you plan to do today, and tomorrow doesn't look like there's even a plan. And in fact, the lawyer I just spoke to, if he had his way, his client would not be before your committee tomorrow. They've not asked the IGP to come tomorrow. You understand? So please, even today, what did the IGP do? We all know how he said he's not well. Therefore, he cannot sit in the committee's meeting. He was excused, and his lawyer stayed. We have not said at all costs and by all means the IGP should stay there. It is his election. If the IGP believes that, oh, he wouldn't even come before the committee, that is his, his decision. You understand? But don't say that in the name of the IGP, we can't invite him to come and speak on a matter which concerns him. I believe that is where the all the alternative party room is working, and people are trying to rebuff it. It is in his best interest that a matter which concerns him, he should listen to it. And if he has any, I mean, uh, I mean, a position to take, he should state it clearly. So that nobody will turn around the second day and say, oh, look at attacking, I shorted the IGP. IGP was supposed to come and, I mean, I mean, answer to some issues. And he didn't offer him the opportunity. So where have I gone wrong in saying that some of the matters concern the IGP and the committee believes that the IGP should appear? But even if there is no reason to, for him to come, we will let him go. What, what is the joy in seeing the IGP's face? Does it give us any financial reward? So people should not go into this, I mean, unprofessional process. It doesn't even inure to the benefit of the IGP. As if the IGP is running away from the committee. But look at the IGP. Very decent, very strong. He's stating his position clearly, and he's talking. Why should a lawyer who's rather, I mean, supposed to understand the issues of fair hearing begin to say that, oh, uh, you are wasting the IGP's time. That language is very bad and contemptuous of parliament. Mm. We are giving, wasting the IGP's time. We are given to understand the speaker expected you to report to the House with your findings by 10th September. Today is 10th October. You still have not done it. If it is true that you are supposed to have reported by 10th September, then it means you have delayed by one month, and that could be one of their justifications, no? We have not 
delayed at all. And everybody should bear in mind that we've been very, very consistent with it. What actually happened is that because they also needed to study what has gone ahead of them, we, we adjourned. We adjourned for them to look at the documents and study the documents. Where did we go wrong? And if you see somebody is saying that maybe you might want to uh, continue up to Saturday, the same person who wants the uh, proceedings ended so that the IGP will be free to go and do his work is complaining. If you don't sit day to day to end it, how are you going to finish the business? How can you talk about delay that you find it very inconvenient to appear? You can't have it both ways. But, but you were supposed to have reported to Parliament on 10th September. Is that accurate? No, we don't have anything like that. There's no mind. They said we should try and finish it by the first week of the sitting of the Parliament. If we are unable to finish, we always have a large amount of time to finish. Okay. What if the issues will make us say some more? What are we going to do? Finally, they take, not, they, take, yes. they take issue with your utterances outside the committee. You speak to media, and they say that you have, for instance, in one place you are quoted as saying that the tip was docked and that there's an original tip elsewhere. Now, there are difficulties that this is a tip that has been authenticated by the person who recorded it. Why do you then say that that tip was docked? What's your response to that? With the greatest of respect, that is very unfortunate. It was not Atatia who said the tip was docked. It was um, uh, Superintendent Men uh, Mensa and then uh, um, 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 Asari. Commissioner Sarri, who said that is not the original tape. They, they said so. And, and, and subsequently, um, uh, um, uh, Chibu Grinabu brought another tape which had a stretch of time longer than the first one. So when I was reporting to um, um, the press, which was what they said we should do, I told the press that, oh, the individuals have said the tape has been doctored. So it was not it was not my conclusion. It was what Mensa and uh, Asari said openly. So why is the bias here? But I'm looking at I multiple publications on September 13. Citynewsroom.com. Viral leak tip on IGP's removal seems doctored. Attachia. My jaw online. Plot to remove IGP. Leak tip seems doctored. Attachia. Ghana web. Leak tip on IGP Dampari seems doctored. Attachia. Ghana business news. Leak tip seems doctored. Attachia. Ghana news agency. Leak tip seems doctored. Attachia. Uh, Daily guide. IGP concussor tip doctored. Attachia. And the list continues. These are direct attributions to you, not to the witnesses you've mentioned. It is never an attribution to me because I'm reporting what has transpired. And it was open. It was not hidden. And the record will bear it out that the people who impugn the integrity of the, of the tape have an issue. Uh, Commissioner, uh, COP, Mensa, and then Asari. Because I didn't know the tape. So when they said the tape was incomplete, what it meant was that they were trying to impugn the integrity of the tape, and that has been doctored. And they even said that there are certain aspects that cannot be attributed to them. They said it openly. So when I appear before the press, that what the evidence that is coming out is leading us to say, uh, uh, as to come to some understanding that the tape is not the original one. And that is when we said. The tape is doctored. So it was not I who was making a positive statement without evidence that the tape is doctored, but rather the two senior police officers who said that is not the tape. And subsequently, guess what? Subsequently, the self same uh, P. Boogie Nabu brought another tape, which was different from the first one. So, what is the point of the matter? Okay. Finally, uh, if the IGP were listening to you, what can you say to him to assure him that? He would get the fairness that he deserves before your committee. And to people who may think that you have issues against him, what do you say to them? I don't, I don't have um, an ambition to become an act. That's the first thing I would tell him. Number two, I can never manufacture lies against the IGP. I will never improve upon the evidence before this committee. In fact, as a matter of, uh, of principle, everything we are doing is being recorded verbatim. So how can I screw the evidence against the IGP? And what will be the motive of doing that? 
So I don't get how some people are nervous about my person. On the contrary, I think the IGP knows me fairly well. I don't have those propensities. What will be the basis of doing this against the IGP? Meanwhile, the IGP is not on trial. It is rather the people on the tape who are being interrogated that did you conspire to uh, uh, get an arrangement to remove the IGP for fear that if it's around, we, uh, we cannot win elections. So how does, how does anybody in his right mind say that we are investigating the IGP? What has the IGP done on the tape? He was being, re I mean, those interviews were recorded. So let the IGP know and the rest of them who are having their own fever. Now, that is not the business of Atatia. I don't have even the nature to lie about another man. And I'm not the only one on the committee. They should, they should stop pretending that I'm the one who's going to write the financing. It will be the committee's thinking that will be embodied in the report. And everybody will come for the proceeding. Even the voice record, if you are interested, they'll give it to you. I can't improve upon the evidence, I'm afraid. Thank you so much for speaking to us, sir. My joy. That's the chairman of the Ad Hoc Parliamentary Committee investigating the leaked 